Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this Thursday's Hangout with Elaine. Every Thursday, we invite in guest speakers and share tips with you to help you grow your business. And this afternoon, I'm absolutely delighted to have with me Phil Berg. Phil Berg is Assistant National Director for BNI in the UK and Ireland, but he's also got his own business, Reach Your Goals, and Phil has been speaking and coaching and helping people around the world. I'm just going to read out some of the countries that he's worked in recently. India, Vietnam, Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, Sweden, Austria, and that's just a few of them. It's like a geography lesson, isn't it? <laughs> but with his hat of assistant director for BNI, he looks after a team of 50 directors and ambassadors around the UK and looking after 1,700 members. What does he do in his spare time? Well, he's very active. He loves all kinds of sport, particularly football and rugby and squash, and he even played soccer for Tottenham Hotspur and Queen's Park Rangers. We won't, let, won't hold that against him, though. <laughs> and uh, he's married. He's got a lovely wife who he's been together since they were 16. So that's very romantic, isn't it? And two wonderful children, Jamie and Natasha. Well, without further ado, I'm going to bring Phil into this hangout and ask him to tell us a little bit about how he got into network marketing. So, Phil, over to you. Okay, thanks. Um, first of all, hello to everybody. Uh, I must just put one thing to bed regarding the introduction, which was quite funny. Uh, <laughs> it, it is true that I did uh, play for Spurs for three years at junior level, but okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't junior level and Queen's Park Rangers. But I often turn around and say, the older I get, the better I used to be. Um, <laughs> so that's true. Um, now, Phil, would that be one of your burgisms? I've heard about this. I'm just going to introduce it now, because if you want to follow Phil on Twitter, it's at philberg88. Don't ask me why. That's not your age. Uh, and then hashtag burgisms. And that must be something that you, I'm sure you're going to tell us a little bit about now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, throughout my years, and I'm not sure how, uh, one-liners tend to fall out, and mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I am writing a book at the moment on one-liners, one-liners of influence, um, and they've got trending going uh, with Brilliant. hashtag Bergisms. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, my, my kids are proud of me. I think I have 2,500 followers, and uh, and I yeah. often say I really don't know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> but you means, do know what you're doing when it comes to networking and the trick to the secret behind whether people should make networking a priority in their business. That's a great question. Well, your, your first question was how did I how did I get into it? And uh, I'm a great believer of fate. I don't necessarily mean waiting to see what happens, but I do believe that anything that has happened, you look back and think, well, if, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be doing this or that or other. Mm. Um, I was invited to a, a BNI event in January 1997. Right. I can't say I was looking forward to it. Um, mm -hmm. because I often think people wouldn't choose to network per se, but I think it's an important strategy that people need to realize they have to do. Mm. So I was invited by a friend to this network thing. Mm -hmm. I turned up completely out of my comfort zone, and uh, when someone's a chatterbox, which I can tend to be, yes. but in my younger days I was far more raw, Mm. You overcome your shyness, if you like, by chatting a lot. And I was mm. completely out of my comfort zone. Mm. Having mm. seen my first experience of it, um, I realized that actually it's a very, very clever way to do business because people people network and have networked throughout their whole life probably mm. but without knowing that's what they were doing. Mm. Mm. So ultimately, I'm not going to say I'm the oracle, but I'm very happy to share networking tips and nuggets that have worked for me and also mm -hmm. perhaps uh, share some things that uh, people shouldn't do when networking. Um, that what would be works great. for you then? What would you say are the key things that have worked for you in your years networking? I think the key thing is to manage expectations. Um, I believe we've all 
been in touch with somebody or, or you meet somebody for the first time and within seconds you feel threatened you feel that you feel that they think they're never going to see you again so mm -hmm. they'll hit on you they're trying to sell to you immediately mm -hmm. and that's a, a dangerous thing and I think people's expectations are incorrect um, mm -hmm. I'm a great believer of, of here's a burgism if you like disappointment mm -hmm. is only related to expectation mm -hmm. so there's a, a burgism and I'm a Spurs yeah. fan so disappointment <laughs> is related to expectation um, and I often think that people their goals are incorrectly set um, mm. and, and that's for the few people that actually set goals most people don't they turn up to these events to see what happens mm. rather than turning up at these events to if you like to make things happen Mm. That's the first thing I would say. Okay. Okay. So when you go at networking, do you have clear views, clear ideas of what you want to achieve? Yeah, I'd expand on that actually. Not just networking. Mm. You know, if, if without getting too uh, uh, heavy, life. Mm. You know, I often say to people, why you at, why do you actually work? Mm. And most people's answer is because I have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I say, and beyond that, you know, there's a great line that, that people say, we don't work for the money. Mm. Now, I'm sure mm. you'll have many listeners on here now saying, well, yes, I do. And I put it back, no, we don't. Mm. We work for what we're going to do with the money. Yes. And the, sh the sad part is when I'm working with a lot of clients, they don't actually know what they are going to do with the money. Mm. They have mm. dreams. Mm. They have aspirations. Mm. but they don't actually have a plan to achieve it so I often say that if you have a goal without a without a date or a goal without a without a plan it is just a dream mm. so mm. taking it to the fact that if I'm going to network as mm. one of my income providing strategies yes I have to know why I'm doing it mm. I have to know where I should do it mm. I have to know what I want to achieve from it mm. and therefore mm. I have to realistically plan how I achieve that. Mm. So are you measuring your results when you go networking? Very much so, very much so. I, I think um, from my experience now with a lot of people and it definitely was myself, there's a lot of people nowadays busier than mm. they'd like to be. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm often saying is your goal to be busy or is your goal to be successful mm. and when put that way the only answer can be well my goal is to be successful mm. we have to accept that we may need to be busy for a period mm. to achieve success success being whatever somebody wants it to be sure but you if someone's saying you know I just want to be busier no you don't you mm. want to be more successful so I tended to find that I've started to take more care and consideration mm. of my time right and my health mm. Mm. and that's mm. a very very difficult thing to do when we're busy mm. Mm. But, but in reality you know we work so hard mm. but work does get in the way of our success indeed hashtag indeed. Burgism. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things, should people go out networking lots of different places? What's your views on that? That's a great question. Um, I like to achieve things easier and quicker. Mm. Okay. Now, there's no get-rich-quick system, but sometimes there are better ways to do things. Um, I, I meet many people that say they're great networkers, and I often say to them, please tell me why um, because they believe they are mm. and their answer is that they do a lot of networking and mm. they always achieve something from each event mm. Mm. to me that's not a great networker that's a networker or it's a person that networks a lot I'll uh -huh. give you an example yes to me a great networker is someone that may do one of the things instead of six of the things mm. Mm goes deeper into the relationships mm. and achieves more in mm. less time. That's a smart way of working, isn't it? We're all about that. We've got a finite amount of time. How, how do you spend that time? I think um, 
I would put it to your listeners that people can talk themselves up. People are legends in their own minds. Um, <laughs> is the that best, a burgerism? <laughs> I, I don't know that it is, but the, the, the best client for a person is usually the same person because they can convince themselves of anything if they want to. So for example, those people that do go out networking at a lot of different things and get something from each one mm. are convinced that it's worth its time. Mm. Whereas my suggestion is do one thing, go deeper and get a lot more mm. and mm. on the other time spend more time with your family, spend more time with your interests. We're, we should be working to live and not living to work. but mm. I will say this, it's so easy when you hear people like myself say that because it's very easy for anyone listening to think, mm. well, it's okay for him or it's okay for her. Mm. Not so. I'm, I'm mm. simply sharing mm. the, the journey that I'm still on. Yes. And it's very easy to blame busy mm. And, mm. and blame that for not being successful. So how do you go deeper in a networking relationship then? What, what, what are the things that you do to focus on one network rather than lots of networks? Great question. Okay, I think it starts from defining what you actually want mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. in life, and then asking yourself, is it truly what you want? Mm. As you know, my company is a sales training company. Mm. Um, quite often, I'll, I'll speak mm. to an owner and say, what is it exactly you want? And he'll say something mm. like, well, we'd like to achieve a 5% increase mm. from our relationship. Mm. And, and this is quite funny, but I say, why just 5%? Mm. And their answer is, well, if we can do more, we'll do more. Mm. So I said, so is, is that a figure you just really plucked out of the sky and mm. quite interestingly for for good businesses it is mm. they've they've they just pick figures out so I would say work backwards mm -hmm. when when do you want to retire mm. really when do you want to retire and that's a difficult question to answer if you're going to follow up it so mm. if you said I, I, I'd love to stop working at 55 or 60 mm. the dream maybe mm. but you have to start with saying mm. wouldn't it be great mm. If you then said, okay, what would I need to do? Where would I need to be at by then? Mm. What do I mm. want to do in my retirement? And therefore, mm. how much do I need? Mm. Mm. So if we're going to be busy, mm. I would suggest that people consider where they network. Where would their target market, mm. where, who would know their target market? Because inevitably, the person in front of you isn't the person that may give you the business you want. Mm, mm. Do you know that whole business about being clear about who your target market is, that's so fundamental and it's quite hard for many people to actually pin that down, but that's a problem if they, if they can't. I think so. Uh, do you know something, you say it's hard, uh, I'm not once going to say it's easy, mm. but it is simple. Mm. And I think it goes back to people saying what, and even in my tone of voice, which is a bit mm. too serious for me but it's what do I want why do I really want it mm. I would suggest to your listeners mm. say to themselves what they want and then picture they've got it right that's a good way to think about it and then you'll know if you can say right I've now got what I want mm. and then picture it how hard will you be working when you have what you want mm. um, will it give you the financial freedom and that will give you your answer if you know what you want. Mm. But inevitably, the person in front of you mm. is the conduit mm. between you and the contacts you'd like to get to. Mm. And, and, then, and then I guess it's being really clear about how you articulate what you want to that person so that they yeah. can spread it to their networks. Yeah, well, we've all heard, and if we haven't, there, there is a, a great, uh, great thing called the six degrees of separation. Mm. Um, the six degrees of separation, and this will hit hard on, on some mm. listeners here, the six degrees of separation simply means that you can name anybody you like in the world mm. and ultimately you are within six conversations away from having contact with that person. Mm. Now, mm. I've done this over many dinner parties. We yeah. just <laughs> plucked a name out of the sky yes. and we, we've had 
I know them or I know one person that knows them. So we're nearer than we think to mm. the people that we may want. Mm. And my question to everybody when I help them with networking and to make mm. it work for them is, mm. if you're that near to the person you want, why haven't you really got them? Mm. Mm. And it perhaps might be that people are thinking too small. They're not thinking big enough and thinking that they can achieve those things. Uh, inevitably it is. I think uh, my standard joke is uh, how many of you would like an instruction to Richard Branson? And <laughs> if I have a, a, an audience, people put their hands up. And I then say to them, okay, well, he's here now. Mm. So mm. what have you got to offer him? Mm. And it becomes, it becomes basically limiting beliefs. I'm a great believer of you can have what you want if you are of value yes. to the person you want. Yeah. And yeah. that's an important message. No, I, I, referrals, for example. Mm. Um, ultimately, networking is about building relationships with people mm. so that they can talk very comfortably about you to their contacts yes. without any fear of, mm. of losing reputation. Mm. So, for example, if I was to refer you, mm -hmm. I want to basically be very comfortable that I'm offering you mm. to somebody else mm. and I'm doing them a favor sure. by giving them you. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you've really got to trust me. You've got to know that I will deliver. So that's the first thing, getting to know that person. Mm. And this touches on goals, which is really great. I mean, I think people have an incorrect goal for a starting line. Mm -hmm. now, you're kind mm -hmm. of going to hear a, a bit of a burgism here, if you like. But mm -hmm. as I say in networking, if you had a, mm -hmm. a two-year financial goal right, and your first year was spent setting the scene, building the relationships. Now, admittedly, you have to financially survive during that first year. Mm. But if you had realistic aims during that first year and you mm. set the process so well that in your second year you achieve those goals, mm. then you achieve your deadline. Mm. But most people seem to want to or need or want to get it quickly. Mm. And that's mm. when it creates hunter mentality. Mm. Mm. And that's when people become a little bit more desperate. Yes. And that's when the recipient feels a little bit threatened or... or desperation yeah. and uh, the relationships undone so you may not earn as much money as quickly as you want mm. but over time mm. you do earn money quicker mm. than you want or mm. not quicker than you want but quicker than you expected and yes. easier yes because we've all met those people at networking events that you know obviously just want to thrust a business card at you get your business and walk away get your contacts and walk away and that that doesn't feel good <laughs> but they are the ones that turn around and say you know I give business cards out everywhere and I always get something mm. and I always say if you gave less out mm. and achieved more mm. wouldn't that be great mm. Mm. so yeah mm. it, it, it's I do a particular presentation called fish in the right pond yes. and it, it simply means locate locate the type of person demographic geographical locate the type of person that would know your target market mm. and build relationships with them to the extent that they would be very happy to introduce you to their contacts mm. because most people are good people and they like helping others mm. But no one wants to feel threatened. Mm. I really like that idea of you know finding the person who could become a referral partner and really developing relationships with that one person. I think that's great. Absolutely. Um, it, it's it's not easy. I mean, networking we have to accept is a way of life. Mm. Um, I'm sure everyone, everybody listening now uh, could mm. could answer this one. I, I often say to an audience, "How many of you boast that you get recommended?" Mm. and nearly everybody listening to you now will turn around and say, yeah, we get recommended. The mm. fact is, it's not enough. Mm. Mm. In fact, most mm. people don't even use recommendation as a strategy. I was actually going to ask you that, Phil, because when you do a good job for a customer, I wonder how many people do ask for a recommendation to their clients? <laughs> a, not many, mm. and really strangely, they don't even ask at the right time. Mm. Now, mm. 
a, a very big mistake in my humble opinion. Mm. Uh, people think the client is the most happiest when they're paying their final check. Right. Okay, because they're paying their final check and saying thank you very much for the job done. Mm. I'm never happy paying money. <laughs> okay, so I'm not paying my ah. final check because I'm over the moon with the job. I'm paying my final check because yes, I'm happy with what you did, but I have to pay you my final check. Yes. So, so when would you ask for the referral? Uh, I used to have a carpet and flooring company for 32 years, which I was very fortunate. I sold in uh, December 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to have a particular strategy of contacting a client two months after the job had been completed, paid. We knew they were satisfied at the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we used to literally contact them mm -hmm. and just say, we, we're we literally making a courtesy phone call mm -hmm. two months after your job. Are there any little snags? Is there anything you need us to come back and have a look at? Or mm -hmm. is everything still okay? Mm -hmm. They would literally at that stage, most of them, turn right. around and say, no, absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. We're very happy. Right. Part of our strategy was purely and simply because you'll have a lot of speakers or trainers talk mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to, to the audience and say, you must have a USP, a unique selling point. Mm -hmm. My humble opinion is a lot of people can't have a USP. They mm -hmm. literally do do the same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's a, you have to have an edge to be something, find something that makes you stand out from the crowd. Right. The reaction we had from clients, the fact mm. that we phoned up two months after we didn't have to, right. meant mm. that a lot of people spoke about us to their mm. contacts about that extra little service. And mm. you've mm. kind of got mm. me touched on one of my biggest passions. Right. My question to a lot of people is, if you had to have two choices and could only take one of them, mm -hmm. which one would you take? And the choices are as follows. Be even better at what you do mm. or be remembered by a lot more people. Mm. And it's an interesting question. And I'm not saying it's don't have both. It's a trick question, is it? <laughs> well, it's an opinion, but here's my mm. thoughts. If you're even better at what you do, mm. but nobody else knows you, mm. then it becomes mm. irrelevant. Sure. If you're even better at what you do, but only 10% of your clients needs those extra services, mm. then again, it's partly irrelevant. Mm. And I stress, I'm not saying don't get better. Mm. But if mm. you only had two of one of these choices, mm. if you already have lots of clients, mm. and let me put this to everyone, mm. they're not using you because you're the best in the world. Okay. And if the odd person listening is the best in the world, they do need to prove and confirm that. <laughs> but most of our clients use us because we're good enough for them. Mm. They're very mm. happy with us and our style. Mm. They're very trusting in the relationship. So if something goes wrong, we can. they, they feel that everything's okay. People mm. work very hard for their money. Mm. And they pick very carefully who they choose to gamble spending it with as well. Mm. So mm. if we're not used because mm. we're the best in the world, mm. then if we could just double the amount of people knowing us, mm. then that's double the amount of people talking about us. Right, right. So mm. it's very, very important for people to understand that we need to be spoken about in a good light. So that yes. phone call two months after, and occasionally someone said, oh, well, actually, as you phoned, mm. uh, we have a little bubble in our carpet or uh, mm. there's a little dent somewhere. Mm. The fact that we used to thrive on situations like that, oh. we sent a, a, an immediate uh, team person to their mm. door, mm. got it sorted and the recommendations from that type of after service. But that's the moment yes. when you can comfortably say, as you're so happy with us, Mm. Do you think there's anybody else that you'd comfortably help us and mm. help them mm. by putting together? And we had many, many, uh, 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 many, many good orders from that type of strategy. I like that idea. I mean, I'm thinking that perhaps in my own business, you know, perhaps the follow-up call a week, two weeks after the work's been done, are you happy with it? And just checking in. 
doing something that perhaps my competitors are not doing? Well, for most of us, um, they won't have actually enjoyed the results of mm. our products or services for a period anyway. Mm. Mm. So the enjoyment mm. element or the result element hasn't mm. actually hit them yet. Mm. Mm. So there are better times. So definitely, when you think of we need to have strategies for income, mm. I'll, I put this to everybody, does everything we all do mm. work? Mm. And if it doesn't, change it, do something else. <laughs> if it's not bringing in the results you want. And it's very <laughs> difficult for people to stop. I often say before we had any clients, didn't mm. we work hard to get them? Yeah. And people say yes. And then I say, and now we've got them, aren't they in the way of us getting any more? <laughs> well, you know, in an ideal world, we would choose our clients. And actually, that's the direction that we should all be working towards, the clients that we best want to serve, best want to work with. Without doubt, we should have A, B, C, D clients. A's are absolutely, they'll use you forever. Mm. B's are people that we think we might be able to get some better business from, mm. but they could be B, B's could be A's or C's. But we sometimes don't give ourselves the time to build the relationships with B-list clients. Mm. Mm. C's mm. could either drop into D's. D's you don't want. Mm. These mm. are those people you still deal with, but they're stopping you earning a lot more profit out of A's and B's. Indeed. So, Phil, I mean, because we're coming up to the half hour, which is incredible. I don't know where it's quickly. gone. But what would be your top tip to get those A-class um, clients through as referrals from your network? What would be your top one tip? Brilliant question. Manage your expectations. Develop the relationships. Your starting line for earning income may not arrive quick enough, but how easy is it when you're dealing with clients and recommendations that, mm. that you may have started that pipeline off years ago. To finish, if I may, mm. one of my biggest frustrations with business people mm. is when they don't follow up on a quotation. Mm. It's not the quotation mm. they, lost, like they lost out on, it's mm. the path of easier business mm. over the future period. Mm. Absolutely. Well, talking about the follow-ups, just quickly, the number of people that drop business cards in exhibition stands um, and they don't follow up with those people who've left their cards because they're interested. You know, so the follow-up is so important and so many people are not, just not doing that, not writing it into their strategy. Reputation, here's a Bergism, it's my favourite one. <laughs> Reputation is what people say about us when we're not there. Mm. And when you say you'll follow up and you don't, mm. Mm. the bad news is someone has known that you mm. didn't. That's right. And they're talking behind your back. And mm. you've actually gone out to network then to, to, to screw your, your relationship and reputation building. That's dangerous. Likewise, if I may, on cards, just very quickly. Yes. Um, the biggest tip I'd say to anybody is never, ever give your card to anybody first. That becomes all about you. Mm. and it's mercenary. Um, if someone gives me their card first and I'm in a funny mood, I mm. say, thank you very much, what would you like me to do with it? <laughs> their, their Adam's apple goes from there to there <laughs> and they, they honestly think I'm going to give it out. Don't give your card first, ask the other person for their card, politely they'll ask for yours back, begin the relationship, take your time to process starting to do business. Mm, excellent. Phil, thank you ever so much for that wonderful talk this afternoon. And I know that you've actually got some fantastic CDs on your website. <laughs> Thank you. I know that you you were saying your website, you're not all that proud of it, but it's a fabulous tool for anybody that wants to follow up from this talk and hear more about what you've got to say because your CDs are available for sale on resu uh, um, results. So remind us of your website again. Sure. Yeah, for your <laughs> listeners, please don't phone me up and ask to design my <laughs> website. I am not, my website is not designed to get me more business. <laughs> no. uh, my website is www reachyourgoals.co.uk there is a page on there which has my five or six CDs and my two DVDs they will definitely guarantee to help you increase profit and sales and network effectively but thank you for the privilege of asking me to come on and I hope it's a bit of help to anybody that's listening <laughs>
Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks every, ever so much, everyone. And do tune in next week. I'm going to be talking about Google Circles and how to grow your network using Google. So it's going to be a fabulous, entertaining session. So till next time, thanks ever so much again. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you.